Hi there and welcome back, dear friends and deep thinkers. Yeah, we are now King Arnulf of Bavaria, and the same King Arnulf, then called of Carinthia, led, led a war against Italy in exactly 894 against one of his brothers in Italy. <laughs> kind of, that was, that was the time when all of the Carolingians, like, went to, yeah, to the gutter. <laughs> some couldn't get kids, some went mad, some lost wars, some were disposed of. And like one or two centuries later, nearly no one was left of the Carolingians. So um, at least that classic Carolingians that formed the Frank, Frankian uh, realms. So let's see that we not invade Italy to have it not take this strange, strange turn with our King Arnulf. But what shall we do with a drunken sailor? No, um, what shall we do with all the counties we have? We could give them to this guy who cannot get rid of his region and will probably die. We can give it to this guy, but he cannot really get more. So we're going to keep the counties for now. Maybe we will get someone young, I don't know, maybe the queen can still do something. <sighs> maybe we should seduce her, romance her. Oh my goodness. Predicting success chance is zero. Great. So, our wife kind of, she likes us, yes, but she also hates us. Interesting. Could we seduce her, though? I mean, the chance is way better. The chance is way better. Yeah, I think we should we should try to seduce her. Maybe we can get another kid and they can get something going. I mean, uh, it's still terrible. We're just terrible at seducing. I mean, look at our diplomacy. We have five diplomacy. We're just... We're just hopeless. It is how it is. Um, and we can give these things away once we get some more counties here to the to the north. But oh, oh, oh. we'll see. We'll see how that all goes. We haven't even started. Um, we have disabled buildings. We could create titles, but we don't want that. Let's negotiate maybe some alliances with Arnulf and Eckehard and our brother-in-law Lothair the heartbreaker mm, let's bring someone over we have two times that thing is what the heck it has all durability, it also has low durability. That's kind of weird, but hey. Um, mm, let's start with holding court, right? We have a little bit of money. The best way to lose that is to hold court. Who is the first petitioner? Duke Gundakar. Oh my goodness, it's a powerful man. Kind of powerful. My lord, the threat of Italy weighs heavy on my mind. King Robert of House Sully looms across the border only days from the gates of Innsbruck and House from Innsbruck Hearths. You must help fortify my lands. Tyrol soldiers and fortifications are all that stand between Bavaria and ruin. Hmm. I must fortify the capital. Italy is no threat. Will burdened, shared burdens, yeah, will burdened by the risks of war. In a brief moment of silence, I see Count Isan Rick making crude gestures before realizing that it's his turn to speak. My liege, she says, giving him some precious time to finalize his thoughts before continuing. That's Isan Rick of Passau. He's up against Odilo of Naumburg. Smiles and laughter are a great indicator of a lively call, thus I have a suggestion for someone who could make a great gesture to entertain us. 
could come to visit my liege if I may, Count Audilo speaks up from the sideline. That jester will ruin the sophisticated air of this court and replace its refinement with crude infantile on humor, says Audilo. I mean, we're a learned man, so... Um, this is not a peasant's market. Uh, um, a jester has no place in this court. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how we are. Um, yeah, we're we're ambitious. We call us, and we're just we're just a, a, such a tight knit man. The next petitioner is evidently somewhat of a stranger in this court, as I do not recognize him, and the eyes of Marshal Anno have been on them since they first entered my lord. I have come to declare that the people of Villac are refusing to pay the taxes you've levied upon us in times past. Our land and people were granted rights and privileges which our recent exceptions ignore. We request that you address our concerns fairly or else. I mean, we're just so. Imprison this wretch marshal and then crush the rabble. <laughs> uh, trick the ringleaders. I'm willing to hear you. No, no, no. Sounds to me like you might be misinterpreting some charters. Give them what they want, tax relief. Uh, we could imprison Uda Schalk. Yeah, I mean, we we call us. We will imprison this wretch marshal and then crush the rabble. We could become inexperienced at crowd control. Here we go, tax revolt crushed. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, conclusion. My business here is done, and we have gained some more martiality, my friends. So this was very successful. We could go Bellum Justum, or Soldiers of Lesser Fortune, or a Man's Home. Yeah, I mean, that would give us good defender advantage. Let's do that. Let us do that, and um, continue our ways around there. Let's see how much we lose if we if we stay like that. I accept your marriage proposal. Nice. Ermenolfo. And Helviva. Sure, sure. And we have an alliance with Lothair. Became the head of Bavarian culture. Wonderful. Uh, what is the current fascination of city planning? Yeah, okay. Um that is something we I mean we're into development. What is happening here? Brrp. As a loud belt echoes through the dining hall, all conversation abruptly ceases. My prince, Archbishop Markwood, pats his stomach and grins, Ah, better out than in, me dad always said. Various courtiers exchange incredulous glances before my courtier, Jero, looks directly at me and exclaims, My king, that was wholly inappropriate. Certainly, you must agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's just, just a courtier and this is the prince, Archbishop. Uh, yeah, um, oh, come on now, uh, like we haven't had when let loose before. Yeah, let's, let's not be, I mean, in the medieval ages, burping was sometimes seen as a compliment for, for a cook, like so. Let's not go overboard there, we're trying to seduce our wife. Ah, an unworthy challenge. Oh, ho, we have a duel with this guy. Who is melancholic but uh, a very nice fighter? Mm. Yeah, join the court, please. Gundpold von Sulzbach, he's our knight. We have good knights. Notable guest has arrived as a claim on the Duchy of Westphalen. We really don't want that war. The truest of Catholics needs a worthy successor. Um, but we cannot go for someone. Okay, um, a name to remember. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? Ah, yeah, we, we started that, right? We we want a regalia. To my beloved Hildegard, in memory of Kalman. Only the lord guides me. There's no need for a dedication. Ah, to my beloved Hildegard. We want to get into her sheets. Ah, uh, Prince Arnulf is coming. Hey, hey, you bring the money. I accept your generous gifts, son. You're doing great. You're doing great. I might give you more. Flawed jewel. Distracted by affairs of court, I let news from a metalsmith, Queen Hildegard. Uh, oh, she's, yeah, she's forging it herself, so it's for her, and she's forging it herself. 
Her work is completely stalled, and it seems I was not entirely to blame. I'm told she spends her funding drinking wine and clowning in the taverns of Regensburg. At last I demand that she's brought before me. Oh, she's a drunkard. Leave this castle at once! <laughs> what? No. <laughs> that better be a masterpiece and soon. Oh god, that would give her stress. See to it that things get back on track. Yeah, we will we'll, we'll be... Hearts and minds. She's very close to her cousin King Lothair. Getting his favor might help me catch her attention. Uh, oh God, no, no, no. That's too expensive. Oh, look, the holding of Geisenhausen got a beneficial deal. Geisenhausen, is that something we personally have? Yeah, indeed, Geisenhausen. And also close to Regensburg. Yeah, that's that's exceptionally good. We should build something there. Maybe farms and fields. Maybe hunting grounds. Hunting grounds would help us defend and give us some money. Mm, yeah, and we're also a we're also a hunter. Construct our hunting grounds. Wonderful! What a beneficial deal that is. Hmm. Cowardly absolver. What what happened now? Betrothed can marry ah, Princess Sophia, our daughter, and Count Heribert of St. Pelton. Oh, all right. I'm happy this disfigured uh, woman is getting someone. Mr. St. Pelton, I hope you can get rid of your region soon. We'll see about that, eh? We'll see about that. Uh, our grandeur is beyond, be, below expectations. What the heck? Uh, we must increase the amenities. Uh, we will we will do that soon. We will do that soon. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Oh, Duke Volta's grand wedding in Aquileia. Where's Aquileia? Where, where the heck is that? Must be here somewhere, right? Italy. I'm delighted to invite you to celebrate the marriage of Natasha Duma Gojevich and I in Aquileia, Duke Walter of Friuli. Oh, wonderful. Um, we could join his wedding. Let's do that. That sounds fun. Well, there's some dangers. Uh, one location. What could. What is the prime location? That could be a problem. I think the mountains. Uh, what else do we have here? Maybe forests. Let's try this out. Forests. Forest does something, but not much. Maybe a fodder mm, that does nothing. A desert warrior. Nah. Uh, fodder forests. What? Experienced captains. Not at all. Mercenary guards would would care for much, but it's too expensive. The fodder doesn't do anything. Uh, a cultural ambassador, nah. A forest guide, wonderful. Join the grand wedding. Hubert von Egmont will be recruited to the travel entourage, and Machtelt van Loon, aha. Wonderful! Uh, a tentative start. Oh, great. My acquaintance Duke Walter is hosting his own wedding, and as time has first come for us to depart. My health is failing. I still look forward to the event. Yeah. Let's travel. The Metal Man? Truly, a stroll through Leonsburg is a gift from God. The tranquility of this place is suddenly and abruptly broken by the furious grunts and the clattering of armor. Hark, get me off of this metal prison. My squire took offense at my manner, even going so far as to call me heartless and has abandoned me. What? I tried to startle my laughter, but the image of this fool clattering across the countryside is just too much. I could of course have someone help him, but it is, true, it is, is it truly worth it? Consider the armor gun for a price. Uh, what? Leopold von Schweipunt. Okay. Offer him loyal squires for his fealty. Or leave him to his fate. I mean, we're cold and just. We'll leave him to his fate. 
That's less stressful. <laughs> Wonder there, metal man. <laughs> we're not truly metal, we're sick at the moment. The hermit. A grotto emerges from the vegetation, like a stone arg in a cathedral. On its entry, there's a small wooden table and a stall. Someone has left a lantern burning on it. Careful, my liege. Carl holds his arm up in front of my chest. There are bandits in these lands. You're quick to make accusations. A dimly uh, illuminated figure stands in the entrance to the cave. I'm merely a hermit, and you must be a king. Um, how fortunate. Tell me about my future. Or we could ignore him. Hmm. What would we think about? I mean, we're cool as just an ambitious. Future would be something tempting. Mm, yeah, a hermit would be a great addition to my... I mean, we could give him a job, right? But it wasn't right calling him a bandit. Maybe we can find some use for him. Travel. There is my hermit, Count Lutbert gives us a warm reception. When we come to his keep, however, his guards seem to chuckle and murmur when they see us pointing at our entourage. My dear King Arnulf, it's such an honor to welcome you at my... Lutbert stops in the middle of the sentence, his face livid. What are you doing with my hermit? What? <laughs> well, he now is my gun. <laughs> Why don't we let him decide who to serve? Ah, uh, it wasn't my intention. Oh, God. Uh, to steal your courtier. Are we getting stress? What the heck? Yeah, it wasn't really my intention. Let's be relatively... Oh, we're at the grand wedding. Let's see what we can do. We could recreate, uh, rec use recreation. Yeah, let's do some recreation. Yeah, sure. We want to relax. That should be. That's Natasha and Duke Walter, and they are they're celebrating something great. I mean, they have a grand wedding. Not even we could afford that. King Robert became the new dynasty head. So that's King Robert of Lotharingia, our new dynasty head. That young pup. Oh, he's powerful, though. He's powerful. Familial reputation. Eh. Feeling fine, thanks to exotic food. Our heir is doing also fine. He's a herbalist. A processed herbalist. What will we what will we find here? What will we do? Are we, will something happen? Anything? I look around myself in excitement. Everywhere I lie my eyes on there are mingling guests. Flowers on every surface, buzzing servants with loaded dishes, and a very proud host, Duke Walter, checking on the final details. The nervous but excited spouses, Duke Walter and Natasha, are standing at the ready. The ceremony is about to begin. I cannot wait. Favor of a lady was destroyed. Someone just stopped to admire something. An inspiration was realized. Well, we have the Bavarian regalia over here, my lord. My wife, Queen Hildegard, waves me over with a wide grin. I've toiled many days and nights, and finally my work is done. She presents me with an object wrapped in cloth. And as I lift the fabric, my eyes grow wide. An elegant regalia set of very fine craftsmen. She did consist of a electrum kept scepter set with pieces of garnet, a wool cloak that has been embroidered with linen thread, and an electrum cross-bearing orb. This is lovely. Thank you so much, or wife. Um, we give us that thing. Bavarian regalia. Wonderful to my beloved Hildegard. Ah. And we are we are now a much better king. Let's see what it does. It gives us piety per month, prestige per month, befriend scheme power, and courtly vassal opinion. It's a very practical thing. The Swiss knife of diplomacy, I would call it. A fantastic joke about candles. Everybody does something. Only we do nothing. But we lost some stress, though. We lost some stress. The ceremony has finally reached its climax. The traditional rituals have been completed, and all that's left is the final vows, the formal consent, the seal of the marriage. As both Duke Walter and Duchess Natasha say, I do, the crowd starts cheering, and we all stand witness to the beginning of their life together. 
It's so excited! Uh, exciting. Form part of the wedding. The ceremony is finally behind us. Everyone's smiling in anticipation of the gargantuan wheel. Exciting entertainment and general revelry we're about to be offered. Let's tuck in. Enjoy. Enjoy indeed. There's a schema discovered. Uh, someone is plotting against Thietmar, our bodyguard. Thankfully, he's a fearless maniac. Every wedding banquet is host to a frankly interminable number of speeches. Some long, some short, some honest, some deceptive. Roiling up and down the hall, punctuating every cause of the feast in waves. As my turn nears, I'm left wondering should I consider the happy couple or focus on the festivities. After all, it's easy for double meanings to get lost for most in this sea of words. I mean, praise the happy couple, praise the um, party. Say something sweet but perfunctory. Um, we're just... Yeah, praise the happy couple. As expected. We're, I mean, we're just and, and stuff. Here we go. The bond between Duke Walter and Natasha crosses the divides. Nice. For them, a magnificent throng of musicians, tumblers and actors are providing the evening's entertainment. Thrilling guests across the hall. Near my seat, both Pope Lucius and Duchess Adelaide share their opinions of the display. A lot of thought goes into the right balance of background noise, muses Lucius. It's good to see some without too much bustle. To my mind, this is supposed to be a celebration for the ceremony. Adelaide opines, so it should have matched its importance and gone all out. Um, mm, we got to agree with Adelaide because that brings us forward to our interests. Wonderful. Who needs the Pope, right? I did everything I could, ensuring that Geralt and Major Mark would be as far from each other as possible. It was not enough. And now they've come to blows in the middle of the feast. <sighs> One of my guards is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. Could throw Markwood off, Mayor Markwood, or the suffragan bishop of Ravensburg. He is from Lotharingia. He is, that's his liege, and that's, whoop, and that's okay. So he is basically our, our guy. Yeah, throw Marco out to cool off, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here we go. Protect our people. That's what we are. After extensive conversation of our meal, Mayor Markwood expresses that is Myers, how I am able to expound at length on my topic. He recognizes true intellect, I see. Our daughter adopted French culture? Why? Ah, yes, she's betrothed to King Louis. Mm -hmm. Ah, is there anything more joyful than a good feast? Guests throng to and fro, eating and chatting, while flickering torchlight plays off every wall, light bouncing like laughter around the hall. I've always found the natural order of a banquet delightful to behold, tables neatly laid out, social ranks quietly enforced, everyone happy and laughing, and in their proper place, exactly where they should be. Sometimes it's nice to simply sit back and enjoy the little things in life. Um, hmm. This is where I want to be. Mm, a, a good folk to mingle with here. Yeah, let's let's gain some opinion with some people that are like us. It feels I've been eating, drinking, mingling, dancing and singing for days. Soon the celebrations w will wind down and the spouses will retire to their private chambers for the consummation of the wedding. For us who remain though, let's pour another drink and let's toast to the spouses. It's time. A good toast. Some people became friends. Wonderful. Carlotta Dilts. Yeah, nice. One after the other, all guests are leaving, and it's time for me to depart too. The wedding was a great occasion to mingle with my peers and relax, and I abandoned the premises tired and satisfied, sending my best wishes to the spouses for a prosperous and happy union. Congratulations again. Nice. So, um. Yeah. We gain prestige. Because we were there and we lose some stress. It's all good. Let's finish the ground away. We succeeded in our recreation intent. 
Wonderful. There we go. And as we're traveling, we have hear weird whispers. I've noticed that Matthias avoids me more than usual. Our bodyguard? He always sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we are invited to a feast and consistently refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me, especially when I overhear him defaming me. Arnulf is a brash sycophant. I'd be a way better king than him. Uh, okay, we could fight against him. Uh, we could scold him. Get out of my sight. Is that the wind I hear? Nah. Mm. Yeah, we want him to leave. We cannot have a bodyguard that is... Whatever. Get out of my sight now. And let's find a new bodyguard. It was a good bodyguard, but if we cannot trust him... And what's the use of that? Uh, we have Michael von Finstingen, who is vengeful and wrathful. We have Adalbert von Otenberg, who's brave, wrathful, and ambitious. We have Gunnbold von Sulzburg, he's brave, wrathful, and callous. Oh, I trust these guys so much. Cholomura is lustful, arrogant, and just. I mean, that's way better, right, to be on honest. So let's hire him. And we need a master of the hunt. Count Dietfold of Kuchaslav. Oh, Lothar von Langenfeld. He already does something. Cholomura, Karl. How about our kids? Our player heir. He's good at that. Let's give him a master of the hunt job. Let's look at our prisoners too. We have Udal Shulk. Our prisoners. Why why is he Why the heck is he in there? Ah uh, Udal Shulk. Can we Would we we could recruit him? He's a super good knight. We could employ him as an executioner. That's even better. Theory He's an irrational adventurer, but he could be a good... Ooh, he, isn't, he isn't bad. He isn't really bad. Borel? Mm, yeah, he's not that great, but he, he could be a good general. He's chaste, forgiving. I mean, sometimes you just get the best people here in, in prison. And that guy is also great as a, as a general. You know the best people come out of our prisons. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go. Odell Shulk. Yeah, they all hate us for now, but that will go away, right? It will. A knight errant. It is known that the people of Murau seem to profess a special devotion towards their knights and their legends. My lord, the knight says, bowing his head, it's most fortunate that you and I came to meet at this crossroad, for I'm in search of a marvellous fountain, which water is said to cure all illnesses. If you were to help me in my quest, I shall pay homage to you. Really nice armor you have there. Care to share? Oh my goodness, no. Join me and forget about that foolishness. I shall never leave a light unattended. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, lead the way. But it, this is so stressful. We're now at a quest. The night leads us to a small clearing where a natural fountain glimmers. The light reflects on its surface. The blissful shimmer and it makes the water look so bright that it feels like a second sun. Careful, a beast, a guardian. The night points at a stag standing between us and the fountain. What an adventure. So inspiring. Don't fear, I shall fight it. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. The travel baron here was so inspiring. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're on an inspiring adventure now. Danger sticks in the wheel. Ditch, I hear Thitma shout out in panic. Soon thereafter, I hear a loud cracking sound, like that of wood breaking off, my patience finally snapping. 
I step out on the grass to see the splintered remains of a wagon wheel. My wagon wheel, I'm sorry, my liege. It was my turn to as a lookout, and I fell asleep at the reins. Oh, great, Thetmar. Hmm. By the blood, we're going to be late. Yeah. Doesn't matter. The trodden path. The procession has ground to a hall. The stones throw away from reed. I look over to see my caravan leader, Carl, dismounted and intently staring at something on the ground. The other entourage members have gathered around him. Carl looks up as I approach. My lord, there's an ant path here. I may be a tad superstitious, but you should never cross an ant path. Of course, my grand, great-grandmother did, and she'd never returned home. Oh, okay, we call us. Okay, fine. We'll find another path, Grumble. We learned something from that, though. Enduring hardships. Yeah, we have been enduring hardships on this travel. We wanted to relax, and instead, if we're on a stressful path, arrival. At long last, I'm finally home. There's nothing better than arriving back in Regensburg after a long journey. <sighs> I look forward to resting for some time, but the call of the road beckons ever onward. My caravan master, Carl, reports that we have journeyed for 348 days and traversed 27 baronies. Thank God I can go inside again. Regency ended. Ah, oh, wonderful. Oh. What would we do now? Let's see about the activities. Can we join here? No, no, no. We'll travel five months for that thing. Mm. How are you doing? Do you have a kid, little one? Yes, and this kid is also beautiful. Ah, I would love to give her something. I should maybe give you something. I could give you at least one thing, right? Now that you know, have no longer a regent, but you're a proper heir. Uh, but what should we give you? Let's see. Let's grant you a title. That is the things he has. And the blue things are the things we have, right? So we could give him like something like Eschen Lower. Mm. Yeah, that, that'll make it good, right? Eschen Lower. Wonderful. That would at least connect to his other domain. You will get Eschen Lower, Eckerhard. Wonderful. Mm hmm and what about your daughter ah ah she's the spouse regent what the heck he's traveling i guess my goodness that's a wife but he has arnulf carling our grandson can we offer a guardianship to our yeah what the heck? We are happy to accept your proposed education arrangement. Wonderful, yes. Um, oh, we're invited to Prince Eckerhart's hunt. Wonderful. We'll join the hunt. It will be um, not much time. I think a forest guide should be enough. Uh, yeah. Do we even have to hide a forest guide? I mean, it's just too city where... Well, better, better do it. Better do it. Okay. Join the hunt. We have the weirdest people. A tentative start. My son and heir, Prince Eckerhart, is hosting a hunt in Eschen Lower, and it's time for come. Time has come for us to depart. I should be able to proudly represent the House of Carling. Uh -huh. As my health is failing, hopefully this hunt should help me take my mind off things and alleviate some of my stress. Yeah, that's that would be good. I hope it goes well. Yeah, let's relax. Let's relax. Wolf struggle. Our, our journey is violently interrupted by the sound of uh, tearing flesh and gnashing jaws and the desperate cries of a man about to meet his end. The noise is so horrific it must have come from the depths of hell. Attempting to track the source, we find a desperate knight struggling with a wild wolf. His blade is wedged between the beast's jaws, but his grip is beginning to falter. I won't risk my life for this. This man deserves my help. What the heck? Uh, help him, Adelbert. What the heck? Yeah, we have very 
low chances. It would be extremely stressful and we're, we're sick. I won't risk my life for this. The call is unjust. Give him to the wolves. As we await the arrival of the rest of the guests, Prince Eckerhard has started on the preparations. His gamekeepers check the woodlands each day for signs of quarry while building a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I've checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now. Soon. Soon, soon, soon. What will happen? What will happen? Yeah, we want to go for recreation, of course. Vicard. Prince Eckhart's Chancellor assembles the party as the sun rises over the camp in the forests near Eschen Lower. The local gamekeepers have scored the vicinity for recent tracks and fumes. The pack is a nuisance, scavenging from farms and retreating deep into the forests. Ultimately, Prince Eckhart decided he wanted to hunt a wolf today. Yeah, let's get out of there. Hunt that wolf, my son. My acquaintance work out signals across the forest. The whole wolf pack crouches in a hollow not far off. The beasts bolt up on our approach, howling the alarm as they retreat into the dense undergrowth. Fang snarling, Prince Eckhart takes off after the beast, crying, Come, it's getting away! Well, let's go. Let's go. We're, we're hunting. This is dangerous. I can hardly keep up with the blasted beast as it darts and weaves through the leafy bushes, howling wildly, scaling a rise and disappearing into a dense thicket. The wolf is gone as quickly as it appeared, with only panting dogs and sweaty horses to show for it. The damn thing is gone! Oh well. Heeding the call of the wild is an adventure, and this outing delivered the good and the bad in abundance. Master of the Hunt, Wycott, gathers a disappointed party and exhausted hounds for the trip home. In the wolf indeed eluded us this time. Let's leave this adventure behind for now. Ah, we, can, we become a hunter and we lose some stress and we gain some prestige. Wonderful. And some experience. Yeah, let's finish the hunt. It's all good. And um, we'll also finish the hunt for now. We'll come back to this in the next episode where we travel back and see what adventures await us further. There's some events here, and there's still Polabia waiting. That could be, that could be good to join. I feel. Have a great time until next time, and happy gaming. This is Manuel Khan signing out. See you soon, and have a great time until then.